Masters, mistresses, the doctor requires materials in order to maintain the TARDIS and ensure continued functionality. He similarly requires carbon-based comestibles to sustain his own biological functions and existence. Master would never say this, but he requires aid beyond that supplied by this unit in order to acquire these. To aid the Doctor in his various tasks and creations, this can be most effectively achieved via Patreon or Substack subscriptions, or through donations directly to PayPal, or if you desire physical goods in return for your contributions, written accounts of my travels with the Doctor are also available on Amazon. Links are in the description below. Thank you, Masters, Mistresses. In that funeral, I'll allow, Mr. Scrooge. And rightly so. Uh, of what use is finery to Jacob Marley now? But he was your partner and friend. Was, sir. Uh, was. <laughs> and I, I expect you'll be wanting payment, too. I oh, thank you, sir. It's not too much, is it? I have change. Ah, yes. Ebenezer Scrooge drove a hard bargain at his only friend's funeral. But hard bargains is his stock in trade. And he has become colder and harder still over the seven years that have passed between the funeral and this Christmas Eve. Is it big enough for a family of nine? This turkey man would feed good King George's entire court. <laughs> Humbug. Afternoon, sir. Bah! Out of my way. Oh! Sir, I employ you to work, Cratchit, not to sit there chattering. Get on with it. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. Huh? 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 Christmas a humbug, Uncle. You don't mean that, I'm sure. I do. Merry Christmas. What right have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Come, then. What right have you to be dismal? What reason have you to be morose? You're rich enough. Bah. I have always thought of Christmas time Each year when Christmas comes around As a kind forgiving 
pleasant time When love and charity are bound When man and woman freely say God bless you on this Christmas day For no return When will the idiots ever learn That it's just another day in the year And not an excuse for confounded good cheer While you'll not profit from Christmas one bit You'll make no money and this I admit But if you observe it and I think you for your soul say Christmas will do you good. Here, here. Let me hear another here, here from you, Cratchit. And you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. Bah, never. And especially at Christmas. But why? Why? Good afternoon. I am sorry with all my heart to find you so resolute. We've never had any quarrel to which I've been a party. But I have asked you in the spirit of Christmas, and I'll keep my Christmas humor to the last. So a Merry Christmas, Uncle. And a Happy New Year. Good afternoon. And a Merry Christmas to you, sir. And to you, sir. There's another fellow. Cratchit with 15 shillings a week and a wife and family. Talking about a Merry Christmas. I'll retire to... Yeah. Huh? Huh? Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. Uh, uh, have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. He died seven years ago this very night. We have no doubt his liberality is well represented by his surviving partner. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, it is more than usually desirable that we make some slight provision for the poor and the destitute, who suffer greatly at the present time. Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons. And the Union workhouses? Are they still in operation? They are still. I wish I could say they were not. The treadmill and the poor law are in full vigor, then? Both very busy, sir. Oh. I was afraid, from what you said at first, that something had occurred to stop them in their useful course. I'm very glad to hear it. We choose this time because it is the time of all others when want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. What shall I put you down for? <laughs> Nothing. You wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone. Since you ask me what I wish, gentlemen, that is my answer. I don't make merry myself at Christmas, and I can't afford to make people merry. I help to support the establishments I have mentioned. They cost enough. And those who are badly off must go there. Many can't go there. And many would rather die. If they would rather die, they'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Besides, I don't know that. But you might know it. It's not my business. It's enough for a man to understand his own business and not interfere with other people's. Mine occupies me constantly. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Aye, but there's one man to whom Christmas time brings no joy. Ebenezer Scrooge, Mrs. Scrooge. They say he's so tight-fisted he can't get his gloves off at night. <laughs> you want all day tomorrow, I suppose? If quite convenient, sir. Mm. It's, it's not convenient. 
and it's not fair. If I was to stop half a crown for it, you'd think yourself ill-used, I'll be bound. And yet you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work. Christmas is but once a year, sir. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. <sighs> and I, and I suppose you must have the whole day. Be here all the earlier the next morning. Yes, sir. Tally-ho! Merry Christmas, Bob! And to you, Peter! <laughs> it looks better on you than on me. still. I won't believe it. spirits walk the earth. It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow man. And if that spirit does not go forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. It is doomed to wander through the world. <laughs> Not share, but might have shared on earth and turn to happiness. Uh, you are fettered. Tell me why. I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it on earth. Link by link, and yard by yard. Now I must wear it as proof of my foolishness. Do you feel the weight of the chain you yourself bear? It was as heavy and long as this seven Christmas Eves ago. You have added to it since. It is a ponderous chain. Oh. If only you could realize that Christmas spirit is an opportunity to make the chain lighter. I didn't. I I 
But you were a good man of business, Jacob. Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were all my business. My time is nearly gone. I am here tonight to warn you that you have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate. A chance and hope of my procuring Ebenezer. You were always a good friend to me. Thank you. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the chance and hope you mentioned, Jacob? It is. Then, um, I think I'd rather not. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first one tomorrow when the bell tolls one. Couldn't I take them all at once and have it over, Jacob? <laughs> Expect the second at the stroke of two. <gasps> and the third at the three of the clock. <laughs> now, look to see me no more. And look that for your own sake. You remember what has passed between us. I must have dreamed up Marley. Uh, are you... Uh, are you the... Spirit, sir, whose, whose coming was foretold to me? I am... Who and, and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Rise and walk with me. But, but, but sir, tis hardly the hour or the, or the weather for pedestrian purposes. It, it is below freezing and I am but lightly clad. I, I'm mortal, don't forget, and, and lightly to fall. Bear but a touch of my hand there. And you should be upheld in more than this. You recollect this place? Remember it? I walked these streets as a boy. These are but shadows of things that have been. Though we are actually here, no one can see us or hear us. You know this place? Know it? Was I not apprenticed here? Ah, oh, such loneliness. That's what made me what I am today. Lonely? No, successful. Comfortably off. Because I chose to spend my time at more useful pursuits than pleasure and enjoyment. Well, bless my soul, it's old Fezziwig. <laughs> Alive again. Your Honor, Ebenezer Dick. Dick Wilkins. Well, 
bless my soul. <laughs> Yo, my boys, no more work tonight. <laughs> Christmas Eve, Dick. Christmas Ebenezer. <laughs> Let's have the shutters up and get ready to make merry. <laughs> Clear away, my lads, and let's have lots of room here. Hilly-ho, Nick, cheer up, Ebenezer. Right-o, sir. Evening, sir. Oh, the fiddler. <laughs> I hope you're going to make a dance this night. That I am, sir. Come in, come in, my friends. A Merry Christmas, Mr. Fezziwig. Hello, Mr. Fezziwig. Oh, Tony, don't it look exciting? Mr. Pezzerwig has done us proud this evening. I bet he has, Ebenezer. He's a kind, generous gentleman, to be sure. They seem happy enough on Christmas Eve. Ah. It takes little to make these silly fools so full of gratitude. You yourself were one of those folks. I was young. But I've grown older and wiser now. Have you, though? I have no use for making people happy. That's hard. My time grew short. I have one more thing to show you. Quick! It doesn't matter to you. It doesn't seem to matter at all. I love you, Ebenezer, but you love something more than me. I take only second place in your life. What do I love more than you? A golden idol which you seemingly worship. Money. Well, bah. If she'd had more sense and stayed with me, she'd be well off now. You have a cold heart, Ebenezer Scrooge. And a cold body spirit. Haunt me no more. Take me back. Have you learned anything this night? Only that as a youth... I was an irresponsible fool. You've made me regret it, however, and I'm grateful. Ghosts? Bah! I have been dreaming. There's nothing here. Especially guns. <laughs> Look upon me. Well? Spirit, take me where you will. I've already been forth this night, or last night, and I'm anxious to end this ordeal. Touch me, Rose. lives. Fella called Bob Cratchit. <laughs> Four rooms and 15 gillings a week. That's why I'm here. To bless this lowly place? Of course. Because what seems lowly to you and lowly to me are obviously different things. Oh, Mother, we were just outside the baker's and we smelled a goose cooking and we knew it was us because it smelled so delicious. That is good, dears. Peter, 
out of there and wait. But, Mother, it smells so fine. Whatever has got your precious father, then? And your brother, Tiny Tim. Do you enjoy going to the church this morning, Tiny Tim? Oh, yes, Father. You sang well in the church, lad. And it has made me hungry. So do hurry, Father. Now, oh, tell me, Spirit, why is it that this wretched snuff won't produce a sneeze to clear my head? You're too mean to give away a good sneeze, Ebenezer Scrooge. Ah. Your values are confused. Take that sovereign you constantly rub between your fingers. This is the first sovereign I ever made. Well, soon it will be worn completely away, and you'll have lost it. Then what use is it to you, unless it is used for good, not hoarded and admired? Well, I... Oh, here comes Father and Tiny Tim. Quick, hide, Martha, hide. Why, where's our Martha? Not coming. Not coming? Not coming on Christmas Day? Oh. Merry Christmas, Father. My darling girl. And how did Tiny Tim behave this morning? As good as gold. He'll see many a Christmas yet, I'm sure. Shh, Bob. Right. Now, Tiny Tim, you sit there and get warm. Peter... Take the little one to the baker's and collect the goose. And no tasting it yet, mind. <laughs> what, Father? Well, Tidy Tim, this will be the finest Christmas dinner we've ever had. I know it will be, Father. Spirit, how is it that Cratchit, a usually rational, dull fellow, or so I've always observed as his employer at my counting house, becomes so irrational this night? He is with his family, and they make him happy. They make him poor, that's for certain. Yet that poverty seems to weigh light enough on him. It is Christmas. But they have nothing to celebrate Christmas with save a sad, inadequate dinner. It is the spirit of the evening that makes small things seem great and inadequate things bountiful. I don't understand you. That is why you're here, to understand. To understand what? Spirit, of course, and the meaning it gives to things. But I have found no need for spirit to give things meaning. Now, take money. You do that often enough. I don't want to hear about it. the greatest goose in the world. Yes, it is, and the tenderest. Will you pass the apple sauce, Belinda? If you pass me my stuffing. It's delicious. Everything is delicious. Well, bless my soul. That is our intention, Ebenezer Scrooge. And I think we might be achieving it. Slowly. Well, a Merry Christmas to you all, my dears. May God bless us. God, God bless us, everyone. everyone. God bless us, everyone. I'll give you Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here now. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon, and I'd hope he'd have a good appetite for it. My dear, the children. Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, 
I'm sure, on which one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, hard-on feeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Robert. Nobody knows it better than you do, poor fellow. My dear, Christmas Day. I'm sure Mr. Scrooge is a good man under his hard front. After all, he is a businessman. And his business seems to be making people unhappy. Still... I'll drink to his health for your sake. And the days. Not his. Long life to him. A merry Christmas and a happy new year. He'll be very merry and happy, I've no doubt. And are you very merry and happy? After that, I have cause to be. But I'm not. Why is that so? Young child. I need him. Tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner. And a crutch without an owner. Carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. Is there no chance he'll live? If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, None other of my race will find him here. What then? If he be likely to die, you'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. You use my own words against me. You use the words. Only you can undo them. There's nothing I can do. There is. But you'll have to find out the hard way. The hard way? My time is nigh. Come. What did you mean when you said I'd have to learn the hard way? You don't seem to respond to kindness and generosity. So, there are other ways. But what will I respond to? And from whom? Those questions will be answered by the next spirit. I pity you in his unmerciful hands, Ebenezer Scrooge. No. No, don't leave me, kindly light. D don't leave me. Oh, no. Oh, please. No. <laughs> No. No. Mercy. Uh, tell me, ghost of Christmas yet to come, you, you are about to show me shadows of things that will happen in the future. Is that so? Uh, ghost of the future, I fear you more than any specter I have seen before. Will you not speak to me? Then lead on. Lead on, spirit. No, I, I don't know much about it. All I know is it's dead. Well, when did it die? Oh, last night, I believe. Why, what uh, was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. Uh, who knows? <sighs> Maybe he tried to eat some of his money. Well, why should he do that? To get closer to it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there no reverence for the dead in this time of yours, grim spirit? Can they be so despised? Is death so meaningless? There ain't nothing wrong with robbing this dead. He was a wicked old screw. It's the truest word that was ever spoken. It's a judgment on him. And it would have been an heavier judgment if I could have laid hands on anything else. Now, old Joe, open the bundle. I always give too much to the ladies. It's a weakness of mine. Now, 
Well, you do ask for another penny, I'll repent of my foolishness and I'll not have half a crown. Now, open my bundle, Joe. What do you call this? Bed curtains? Bed curtains. <laughs> you don't mean you took them down with him lying there? Eh? Yes, I do. Why not? <laughs> you was born to make your fortune, and that's a fact. You won't find an owl in that shirt, or a threadbare place. It's the best he had, and a fine one too. They'd have wasted it all if it weren't for me. What do you mean, they would have wasted it? Putting it on him to be buried in. Someone was fully enough to do it, but I tipped off again. <laughs> uh, well, there's justice for you both. He made hardship for our crime when he was alive, and now we profit from his death. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost, I see. I see. The lot of this unhappy dead man might be my own. My life is like his even now. Merciful <gasps> heaven. What is this? I can't look, spirit, I can't. But is there no one in this city who feels some emotion for this dead man? If there is, show me that person, I beseech you. You must be near home by now. Time. But you walked slower now, Mother. I've known him to walk with... to walk with Tiny Tim upon his shoulder very fast indeed. And so have I. Tim was very light to carry. But your father loved him, sir. It was no trouble to him. And there is your father at the door. Don't grieve, Father. Don't mind it. No, I... I'll try. Oh, you've nearly finished your work there. You'll be done before Sunday, certainly. Sunday? Then you went there today, Bob. I... It's a beautiful place. So green. But you'll see it often. I promised Tim that I'd walk there on a Sunday. Try not think so much about it, Father. <laughs> no. Now and whenever we all part from one another, I am sure that we must not and will not forget poor Tiny Tim. Shall we? Or this first parting that was amongst us? You promise me? Yes, Father. Yes, dear. Spirit, I hate your domain. Everywhere is death and misery. Return me to my own time. But before you do, tell me what man that was whom we saw lying dead. Before I draw near to the stone, answer me this. Are the shadows we have seen of things that will be or might be? Am I the man who lay upon the bed? Who was robbed and scorned? Oh, no. No, spirit, no. Spirit, hear me. I am not the man I was. I will not be the man I have been. You and your companion spirits have shown me my errors. I shall change. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will not shut out the lessons you were taught. 
and I shall sponge the writing from this stone. Oh, tell me that I may. They are not torn down. They are here. I am here. I don't know what to do. I'm as light as a feather. I am as happy as an angel. I am as giddy as a drunken man and as merry as a schoolboy. A merry Christmas to everyone. A happy new year to the whole world. Hello there. Woohoo! Honey, you! Ah, in the next street but one? Uh, well, yes, sir. An intelligent boy. A remarkable boy. Do you know if they've sold the prize turkey that was hanging up there? What? The one near as big as me? No, sir, they ain't. What a delightful boy. Now, listen, lad. Cut down there and buy it. And bring it here. Right you are, sir. I need some money. Money? Ha, 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 ha. There's your money, lad. But how do you know I won't run off with it? Because I trust you, boy. And because it's Christmas. Hurry now. Thank you, spirits of Christmas. Off, heavy, sir. Good, good. You're a fine lad. Thank you, sir. And here's your change. Hmm? What? Change? Oh, no, you keep that. Cool. Thank you, sir. On the contrary, thank you, lad. A Merry Christmas to you now. <laughs> Mr. Scrooge, sir, is everything all right? I mean, am, am I... A Merry Christmas, Bob. May I come in? Uh, oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, are you feeling well, sir? <laughs> Better than you'll ever know, Bob, my boy. Why, it's Mr. Scrooge, isn't it? Indeed it is, Mrs. Cratchit. And at my most ill-mannered. For I've come to invite myself to dinner. Well, whatever we have is yours. And what I have is yours. A Merry Christmas to all of you. What's got into him, I wonder? The Christmas spirit, I'd say. Look at the turkey. By the look of him, it was more than just one spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I truly have been. We, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas, our dear Mrs. Scrooge. 